In this video, we are going to discuss some of the new features in CreaForms VX Elements software. Now, the VX Elements software is the standard software that comes with the scanner. Um, and it lets you control a lot of things uh, while you're scanning and then post-processing the data before you'll take it to a, another application like VX Model or VX Inspect or into a product like Design X or Geomagic for SolidWorks or PolyWorks. So uh, many times you'll want to do some cleanup or do some different things before you do that. Um, so we'll walk through and just show you some of the new stuff uh, specific to VX Elements version 7. Uh, we have another video that goes through all of VX Elements that you can watch as well. So some uh, things right away, uh, if you're familiar with uh, VX Elements, is with VX Elements 7, you'll notice this screen right here it sticks out at you that's changed. And that contains just a lot of the uh, scanning parameters or just some of the things that um, you want to quickly access. Now, depending on what scanner you have your system configured for, you'll see that here. In this case, we have the um, Metriscan scanner. And then right here you have the um, configuration and calibration buttons, so that's real easy to pick. You've got your uh, shutter down here, um, and you've got configure preset. That's something new we'll cover. Um, and then depending on your scanner, for example, the new HandyScan Black and the Metriscan have what's called an HDR mode, um, and you can set that uh, right here. Uh, what's um, new here is you can basically turn it off, you can turn it to a high contrast mode, or you can custom set it, uh, which you used to be able to do. The high contrast mode just automatically sets it for you. So HDR mode, for those who don't know, is the ability to scan light and dark things uh, without having to adjust the laser and the cameras uh, for each one. Normally, if you adjust for dark and you want to do light, um, you have to set them separately. HDR mode does that automatically. So again, this screen is new. And then um, another thing is, is there's no more edit scan button. So you can see here I've got some scan data. And if I, for example, wanted to come in and select, uh, you know, some of the triangles to do some operation, I no longer have to go to edit scan mode. You can just select on them, you know, just like that. So that's kind of a, a neat, uh, a neat new uh, way to be able to edit the scan data. You can just click on any selection tool. So let's kind of walk through um, some of the things. So the interface interface looks a little bit different, but generally it's the same. You've got your scan button here. Uh, you've got uh, preview, which right now we don't have because we're not in the scan mode, reset. Uh, and then some of these commands here are new. So the first one that's real nice is called remove background. So if you click on that, uh, what the software is going to do is it's it's going to look at the geometry you've scanned and try to figure out what's the background. Typically that's going to be a plate or a table or something you've got the part set on. So you can see here, now if you have targets, uh, again if you're using handy scan or maybe the go scan, um, typically you're going to have a targeted table or targets on the part. It's going to look at that and try to determine, hey, is that the background? In this case we just had the part uh, fixtured up on a table and you can see what it's done. It's recognized, hey, this big flat area looks to be the background. But while I'm in this command, I can grab this and move it up. And you can see everything in red is what it's going to delete. And basically what it's doing is creating a clipping plane. So we can take a look at that. We can say, hey, that looks great. And we can say create. Okay, and this will take a sec. So what it's basically going to do is going to clip that off and get rid of it. Um, now, if I was continuing to scan, um, we won't see any of that data on the table. So that's a pretty nice command. So now you can see it's basically created a, a clipping plane, which in the tree over here is called clipping object. Uh, and if you click the down arrow, you can see it there. You can turn it on or off. But if I continue to scan now, basically I won't see any of that data. Um, so that's pretty nice. Now, there's also clipping reference or the traditional clipping plane, just like you used to be able to do. So the way clipping reference works is it allows you to use reference geometry, either existing scan data or a CAD model. So in this example, what I'm doing is a real quick scan at a low resolution. And let's say there's just one item here that I really want to focus in on. So maybe it's something that I'm going to scan over and over for, let's say, uh, doing production uh, inspection. Or it's just I want to be able to isolate an area and only scan that. 
So what I'm doing is deleting um, all the other data uh, except the one object that you see here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, export that mesh uh, and save it out. And we'll just give it a name, call it tape measure. And then we're going to import that mesh back in as reference data. So we'll go ahead and pick it. And then we give it a distance around it. So in this case, we'll say five millimeters. Basically, use this as reference and then go beyond it and use, uh, you know, give it a buffer of about five millimeters. And now we're going to set our resolution to, to much lower. So we're going to go from two millimeters down to a half a millimeter. And then we'll go ahead and reset and start scanning. So now as we scan, you can see it's not picking up any data unless it's within that five millimeter buffer of the tape measure. So it's just a nice way to isolate, um, really in 3D, be able to isolate uh, where you want to scan. So instead of trying to use a plane, um, which can be limiting at times, now we're actually using scan data as reference. So, uh, so it's a very nice way to be able to isolate and again, either scan the same object over and over or just isolate an area. Now another nice feature is now if you look down here in the corner, the orientation uh, uh, object, I guess we can call it, uh, is new and, and that's pretty nice. You can just click on a face and it'll rotate it or on an angled face. Um, obviously as you rotate you'll see it. Okay, So you can grab this and just makes it easy to, to rotate around. Um, that's another nice new feature. So with the announcement and release of the new HandyScan uh, Black 3D Scanner, you'll notice here on the back of the scanner is this new multi-function button that allows you to do some really neat things right while you're scanning. So as you're scanning along, you can see it's ergonomically placed right where your thumb is and allows you to access this multi-function ability and it's smart enough to know depending on what you're doing uh, for example if you're not starting to scan yet you could do something like calibration uh, auto adjust uh, things like that and then once you're in the actual scanning process uh, if you push that again you have access to different uh, commands so it's smart enough to know and these are the, the most common things you typically uh, would want to do uh, while you're scanning. So it's uh, it's very intuitive. Um, you don't have to go back to the computer uh, to uh, make a lot of these changes. Um, it's it's very interactive. So again, as you scan, you can hit the button uh, and uh, toggle through some different settings and different menus uh, to get to uh, some of the uh, the most commonly used uh, commands while you're scanning. So another new feature that is unique to the HandyScan Black and the new GoScan Spark is when you're scanning now and you're done scanning, basically when you hit stop scan, um, the rendering of the final actual polygon mesh is almost instantaneous. And that's because we are now uh, using some high-end graphics cards to basically do a lot of this rendering on the fly. So we're actually taking advantage of some high-end graphics cards and using the memory right on those cards to scan. So this allows you to scan uh, and when you're done you basically hit stop scan and it takes literally seconds to render. Um, so you see here as we move around and scan and of course the longer you scan the more data you're collecting. So now when we hit stop scan, you can see uh, the process is very quick and, and you can see what you get because you're kind of in that low res mode when you're scanning. Now it's almost instant. Once you like what you see, then you do finalize uh, and that just uh, does some final um, editing and uh, then you're ready to export. So uh, getting a render to see what your scan data looks like now is very fast and once you're done you finalize it and then you can uh, go ahead and export it or do whatever you're doing so this is again unique to the uh, GoScan Spark and the uh, HandyScan Black. Another improvement is the distance meter now for the new HandyScan Black and GoScan Spark instead of it being on the left side 
it's actually the crosshairs, uh, the basically the, the scanning crosshairs, and on the uh, spark, it's the lines. Those will actually change color in the area that they are either too close or too far away. So, for example, uh, areas where the, the crosshairs of the lasers are blue would indicate you're too far away. Uh, and if they're red, would indicate you're too close. And if they're green, you're at the proper distance. And that distance is basically the depth of the field or where the cameras uh, can see. So if you're too close or too far away, you're basically not going to pick up any data as opposed if they're green, you're going to pick up data. So that's great for parts that have varying depths. As you move around the parts, you can see if you're too close or too far away. So it's a real nice new feature, uh, again, for the Ghost Scan uh, Spark and the Handy Scan Black. For the other scanners, it will be just the normal meter over on the left side. Another exciting feature that customers have been asking for for a while is the ability to save a scan template. Um, now, in the past, you could always save a session file, and it could be an empty file. But certain things weren't stored. Um, certain parameters, um, clipping planes, things like that were, were not stored. Well, now what you can do is set up a uh, project. You can even pre-scan maybe targets. You can set clipping planes. You can set pretty much all the settings that you can set in the software. Uh, and then you can save that as a template. So that's great if you do uh, you know, uh, similar parts of either size or complexity. Um, you can preset all of this stuff ahead of time and then load in uh, those uh, settings uh, that are stored and uh, quickly begin scanning. So a very nice productivity tool that can save you uh, time of not having to set things up um, you know, over and over for things that you do um, you know, redundantly. So the last command we're going to show here is the new scanning area tool. Uh, if you notice here, we're scanning a part, and it's a small part. We're on a little, uh, you know, manually uh, rotating turntable like we use a lot. Uh, but you can see the part is pretty small, and we're trying to scan it at a, you know, fairly high resolution of 0.3 millimeters. So let's zoom in here a little bit, and you can see it. So it's a small part, but we're getting a lot of data we just don't need. Now, of course, we could do the uh, clipping plane and some of the other stuff we showed. Or the other thing we're going to do, let's just reset, and let's... Uh, turn down our scanning area to 25%. And now when we hit scan, basically where we start scanning, you can see uh, it's only 25% of the, uh, you know, the normal scanning area. But you'll notice it's still seeing the targets beyond that area. So it allows us to gather the targets in a bigger area, which can be helpful. But you can see we're just reducing the area that we can scan in or it's actually going to collect data. So it's a nice tool, especially when you're trying to do higher res scanning and really get some fine detail. You just don't want a lot of extra data. So it's, it's a really nice tool to, uh, to be able to do this. All right, so just to wrap up this video um, and just review what, uh, what we looked at here uh, in new VX Elements version 7, we have the new scanning panel uh, over on the right-hand side with just some of the most relevant uh, information and um, access to commands you use uh, the most. There is the new adjustable scanning area that allows you to actually just capture a smaller area. That's only available on the Handy Scan Black. Also the distance meter right on the scan lines. Um, so you can see if you're too close or too far away. Um, also that's on the new Handy Scan Black and the new Go Scan Spark. The uh, new clipping tools, which allows you to set a, a background, um, a plane like you always used to be able to, and then also reference. Reference can be both a CAD file or a actual scan data. Uh, we've got the new navigation cube down in the corner. Um, we can edit the mesh now immediately. We don't have to go into that edit mesh mode. We can s simply just start selecting on it. We have the new scan templates that allow you to basically save those uh, session uh, most common things you use and then load it up. The new scanner multifunction button, which is uh, on the new Handy Scan Black. Um, also, the HDR mode updates, that's what allows you to scan dark and light at, uh, at the same time. Um, those updates are available to the Metriscan and the Handy Scan Black. 
And then finally, that instant mesh creation, taking advantage of a high-end uh, video graphics card, is available on the HandyScan Black and the GoScan Spark. So there's some other minor changes uh, or updates, but those are the major ones. So uh, a very nice improvement to you know an already good piece of software. So this wraps up the what's new in VX Elements 7.0.